Hey y'all, Chris in the Movie House, and today I want to talk about Alien Romulus. Man, it is hard nowadays to get excited about any new entry of a storied franchise. Years of countless subpar projects and fan backlash have culminated in the ultimate coffin nail of any IP. Fan indifference. Star Wars has been reduced to a cringy TV brand that can barely make it past a single season. Star Trek and Doctor Who have flat out crashed and burned. Amazon wasted a billion dollars on a Lord of the Rings show no one cares about. And the only reason success Marvel has had is a movie mocking how terrible Marvel has been this last half decade. So at best, I was cautiously optimistic about Alien Romulus, the latest in a series that, it, let's be real here, hasn't had a truly great movie in like three decades. As positive word of mouth spread about the movie and people seem to have been losing their gourds about it, I got more and more excited. But then I remember the same thing happened a couple years back when Prey came out. A movie glazed up as to be some sort of new age classic, but instead it was just a good looking but deeply flawed flick with an absolutely insufferable protagonist. And frustratingly, again, I have to be a dissenting voice. While it starts out strong and is absolutely impressive as all hell from a technical standpoint, Alien Romulus doesn't stick the landing. Set in between Alien and Aliens, the story concerns Rain a young woman trying to escape the soul-crushing wage slave existence on one of Wayland yutanis backwater colony planets. Not seeing any legitimate ways of liberating herself and her synthetic surrogate brother Andy, she decides to take a risk with her friends, who have hatched a plan to steal cryotech from the nearby decommissioned Romulus Remus space station drifting above the planet. Doing so would allow them to make the years-long trip to greener pastures. This plan quickly goes pear-shaped when they discover the Romulus was host to experiments on the acid-blooded biomechanical terrors, which they've inadvertently let loose after turning the power back on. So now, they not only have to survive the xenomorph threat in all its forms, but escape the station before it's destroyed as it rapidly is ascending into the planet's rings. I feel the need to stress the positives of Alien Romulus before I lay into it, because even if I didn't love it or like it, there's still things to praise here. Firstly, director Fetty Alvarez delivers a visual feast, on top of it simply just being well shot. It really authentically feels of this universe. The world and its tech is still of the dated analog 1970s future with grainy CRT TVs and simplistic green text computer monitors. Not only are there gobs of practical effects here for the entire alien life cycle, it's the best they've looked since like Alien 3. Cause a creature like the alien needs to be tangibly just there with all that drool and biomechanical detailing. A movie like this proves what good production design can achieve with a sub-$100 million budget. It is unreal how much better this looks than films with upwards of three times this budget released in the last year or so. Much like the last two installments in this series, the best character in this film is the synth. David Johnson delivers a fantastic and varied performance as Andy. He starts out as this almost autistic, doe-eyed little brother constantly telling dad jokes to try to ease the humans around him. But then after getting a software upgrade halfway through the story, he switches to cold, calculating android working against our leads to protect Waylon yutanis interest. He's a real highlight here, and this really feels like the first installment in a long while that has genuine affection for the franchise, and I mean the entire franchise, warts and all. Because, on the flip side, it's so reverential that it ends up feeling like a fan film, and not its own thing. Preoccupied with shoving as many member berries as possible, rather than actually providing something new. Dialogue, story beats, hell, even whole shots are replicated taking bits and bobs from every film in the series. Movies that have wildly different tones and directorial visions and attempts to kit bash it all together. Some of these felt so forced that I was able to see my brain due to how much my eyes were rolling in the back of my head. I know this is the franchise that has the single greatest female action lead in all of cinema, but they really need to stop trying to recreate Ripley and do something different. They have to pivot. At this point, it's like a fifth generation copy of an old VHS tape, unfocused and lacking any of the definition or grit of the original. And it's not that Kaylee Spaney is bad. She does a solid job with what she's given, making for a decent lead, but there's so much more to a character like Ripley than simply being a sweat-drenched, dark-haired lady strapped to the pulse rifle. Then there's the rest of the cast. They're fine. There's just not much to them. They all have You Will Die stamped on their heads, and unfortunately, like the last two films, they make some unbelievably boneheaded decisions. But in the plus columns, there's not an ounce of hacktivism present. Said cast is diverse, but it's just allowed to be so. Not one of them acts or sounds like a liberal arts major. There's no soapboxing or shoving in some message to pull you out of the movie. No, it just does that by other means. Ridley Scott's latter-day influence on this series is still felt here as producer, and that's not necessarily a good thing. Yes, Scott directed the original Alien, and he transformed what easily could have been a B-movie into one of the greatest horror films of all time. But he also gave us the convoluted gobbledygook that is Prometheus and Alien Covenant. He's a master visualist, but he's not a writer. More importantly, he's not the creator of Alien. This was Dan O'Bannon and Ron Chassette's baby. The only reason we ended up with the H.R. Giger design for the Alien was O'Bannon knowing Giger years prior. So while Scott is an important part of the original film's success, no doubt his opinions are not gospel. Case in point, it was apparently his decision to commit the ghoulish act of 
deep faking a dead actor to reprise a role from a previous film. Not only are the effects here terrible, giving off mad Rogue One Tarkin vibes, it's just this whole extended cameo is just, it's completely unnecessary. These info dumps could have easily been given to an original character, but no, even when you're six feet under, Hollywood owns your digital soul. Also, and I fully admit this is just nitpicking, but God, the incubation period for the Xenos in this movie is ridiculous. I know the series has always played fast and loose with how quickly it takes for the aliens to grow in order to suit the needs of the story, but given the ticking clock within the plot, what once took days or hours is now mere minutes. And all this adds up, culminating in an ending that completely derails all the good faith that the first half of the film garnered. Without going too heavily into spoilers, the film's climax takes a wild swing, bizarrely incorporating elements from both Alien Resurrection and Prometheus, elements that didn't even really work in their own respective movies, and they sure as hell don't work here in this new pastiche of bullshit. I know a lot of my contemporaries have been praising the ending, but the design of the final monster just doesn't work for me at all. There's certainly a way to do this concept right, but they've yet to nail it. What's here is a copy pasta of the original film's surprise fourth act with a creature that just belongs in a totally different movie. But really, you know what's the biggest thing preventing me from liking this? The thing that just, the little idea that just kept chipping away at the back of my head the entire time watching it? That I'd just much rather be playing Alien Isolation. Alien Romulus desperately wants to be the film adaptation of the incredible 2014 video game. There's so many direct parallels to it. Hell, the game's save points are in this movie, but courting such comparisons does it no favors, because Alien Romulus does nearly everything worse. Not only is Isolation one of the scariest damn games ever made, bringing the Xenomorph back to the pure terror of the 79 original, it tells a way more engaging and satisfying story set between the first two movies. With subtler callbacks, fun additions to the mythology, and an absolutely staggering twist in the beginning of the third act, it completely trumps Romulus. A happy side effect of this, though, is that the game has received a massive spike in players since Romulus' release, so if anything, I'm happy about that. The Alien franchise is a weird beast for me. My love for it is cemented from all of like the ancillary media of comic books, video games, and wildly inappropriate toy lands marketed to children. When it comes to the movies themselves though, I like maybe three of them. One and two are masterpieces, like Nada. But I hold a major soft spot for the cinematic car crash that is Alien 3, especially its assembly cut. Every other movie in the series are just varying degrees of disappointment, some way more than others, and admittedly some I've warmed up to as time has gone on. Maybe that'll end up happening for me with this flick. I'd hope it to be true because I, mean, I wanted to love this movie. I wanted this to be my favorite movie of the whole year. I'm happy this has been a hit both critically and commercially, but for me, in the end, I found Alien Romulus to be some disappointing silver screen schlock. But that's enough for me. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts. Comment, like, subscribe if you want. It'll help me out. But more importantly, until next time, stay safe out there.